Thanks, Sterling. I've just uh, moved over onto currency futures just to get away from uh, spot markets for a moment. Uh, it's a very simple workspace. I've got the CSI over here. I think I've got this on five minutes. I've got the currency matrix here on 10 minutes, a little bit slower. And these are the futures contracts. This is the 6A. Not the diverse range you got in spot, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, these are, and bear in mind, these are pretty chunky contracts. Uh, these are large. They're not the micros. These are the full size. This is the, the Aussie dollar. 6B is the um, pound cable. Uh, this is the 6C, which looks a little bit odd because this is the Canadian dollar, but it's actually uh, presented as, it's not the dollar CAD, it's the CAD dollar because everything in a futures contract is presented with the dollar as the counter currency. So in terms of if you're seeing Canadian dollar selling, then this chart is going to go down, not up. So if you're trading currency futures, please be aware of it. This is the 6E, which is, uh, as you would expect, this is euro dollar. Uh, this is obviously correctly notated in terms of it follows the spot. So the, the ones to look out for, obviously, ones like this, the dollar cad, the dollar yen is the same uh, situation as well, where the dollar becomes the counter currency. All I've isolated out here is basically in terms of the dollar, because the dollar is up here. And, and this kind of answers a little bit uh, Boris's question earlier on. I've got the dollar up here, which is now up into overbought. I've got the euro down here, which is in oversold. You know, I'm looking at a potential opportunity. Uh, and there's quite a few signals coming in that, you know, potentially this could reverse. In terms of the, the euro itself, euro dollar, what have we got? We've had a volatility snap. We've had uh, some decent volume, some decent buying coming in under this hammer candle. And the question you've got to ask yourself is uh, really, you know, does that suit me? Do, am I comfortable taking a position which is getting in early? We're basically uh, setting up for a trend that's possibly going to reverse if the dollar moves uh, to the downside all the way down from overbought to oversold and equally the euro moves from oversold to overbought. We'd obviously be looking at this in two, uh, several different time frames. We just happen to be looking at it in one. You've also got the euro dollar down here. It's the most, uh, it's the weakest currency pair in terms of the matrix. And what we're seeing at the moment in terms of universal sentiment towards the dollar, it's pretty universal, but it's not uh, complete because if this were in an ideal world, what we want to see is the New Zealand dollar down here as well. And we want to see the Aussie dollar down here. And then we start to see the process moving. And what we're starting to see potentially right now is a live a pickup in these currency pairs as bullish sentiment starts to move in here, reflected not only in terms of buying of the primary currency, but in selling of the counter currency in terms of in terms of selling of dollar, obviously. So as the Aussie dollar starts to move up, you want to see Aussie buying, you want to see dollar selling. And equally, we want to see the euro start to move up. Now, that dollar selling that's starting to develop here, if it develops more fully, that may well ripple through and into all these other charts. But in terms of looking at it as an opportunity, you have to be patient because uh, currencies don't move from overbought, overbought to oversold instantly. They stay there. This could stay here for some time. This could actually climb up higher. This could drop lower. This market could fall before it actually rallies and starts the reversal process, which ultimately it will because all markets have to at some point in terms of the Forex world at any rate, because it is a world of mean reversion. So the question is, does that suit me? Am I comfortable putting a much wider stop loss on? Because if you were looking at this particular chart, you know, as a scalping trader, you've got to put a much, much bigger stop loss in position in terms of put more risk on the table, because right now this is not a trend. It's just going to develop into a congestion phase. It could go either way and you just have to protect yourself. Now, once the trend is underway, if you were in this and you started to see this trend developing, then it's a different scenario because you're going to put a much tighter stop loss on because the trend is already is already underway. It's already moving. It has momentum. But when you're trading it as a reversal trader, there is no momentum. The payoff is you get you get rewarded because I'm going to put a much bigger a risk on the table in terms of my stop loss position. Then I'm going to get rewarded because I get in at the start of the trend. You come along later and you get into the trend, but you don't put so much risk on the table. Therefore, you don't deserve so much reward. It's basically how it works. All trading is like that. The bigger the risk you lay on the table, then the bigger it should be your reward and vice versa. So it just it goes back to what I was saying. Every trader is different. Every trader has uh, things they find comfortable, things they find uncomfortable, things that don't suit their risk profile. 
markets that don't suit them, currency pairs that don't suit them. You know, it's finding what's comfortable for you. And that's why we make such a thing in the Forex education program of starting with a psychology module, which some of the students do, you know, they moan and grumble about occasionally. Oh, I'm, you know, I want to get to the exciting stuff and all the rest of it. But the psychology of trading is where it starts, because if you understand yourself and you tailor what it is you do, to suit your strengths, play to your strengths and manage your weaknesses, you will enjoy trading. If you're trying to do something that doesn't fit your personality in which you find uncomfortable and which you don't enjoy, you're not going to make money. It's as simple as that. I just wanted to touch on the currency futures just really to make the point that they are there. They're not so broad as the spot market. Uh, they are much bigger contracts, but more importantly, the principles of everything, of VPA, of the indicators and everything else works in exactly the same way. It makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. And do you see what I mean right now? You know, these currencies are not ready yet. We're seeing a flick up in the dollar, flick down in the euro. You know, this isn't ready yet. Uh, it's going to sit here, maybe sit here for a while uh, and, uh, you know, develop later on in the session. You pay a price for that in terms of why the stop loss. It's as simple as that. I'm going to wrap up there because we've been going over time. Apologies, way over time. Sorry about that. Uh, very quickly, where you can find all the bits and pieces, this is Quantum Trading Education. This is the Forex Education Program, so you'll find it here at quantumtradingeducation.com. It literally covers everything you need to know from psychology. That's the psychology module I was talking about, fundamental, relational, technical, mechanics of trading. There's over 200 hours of videos in here, webinar libraries, topic webinars, pulling all together, how to use the indicators, very important, obviously, and a bunch, a whole raft of VPA chart examples to get you started, to really start to help you understand. The technical analysis really takes it uh, down to absolutely the, mode, the core essentials of volume price analysis. And, you know, one of those aspects is, is understanding the difference between primary and secondary trends and how to apply VPA so that you don't get kicked out of trades in pullback situations. It's just a, a, a key part of the whole program. And you've got uh, the VPA traders chat room down here, which you're, you're, you're invited to join, which Anna and I host all the time. And it's uh, very busy with uh, with other traders and a lot of our students are making uh, very good money there and they share their time very freely as well. Uh, this is Anna's site, annacooling.com. You'll find all the books are up on Amazon in the paperback and Kindle. And the finally, just over to quantumtrading.com. This is where you'll find all the indicators. Uh, there's a couple of posts gone up today, I think on labs uh, to do with Ninja and also to do with TradeStation. Uh, which we are uh, completing on. I'm delighted to say we are nearly there. So they will be going up. Uh, so that will be coming along very soon. MT45, Ninja Trader 78, and Trading View will be dropping back onto Trading View to bring all the other indicators across onto that particular platform as it now has the capability to support our, our indicators, which are complex and which require object and line drawing. So we've now got that option, which we didn't have before. So we will be completing the set over on TradingView. So hopefully the the, uh, the range will be complete. Then we'll be moving on to multi-charts and we've got others in the pipeline as well. And just to reinforce the point that if you invest in an indicator or a group of indicators on one platform and you want to transfer to another in the future, we make it very simple. You don't pay anything. We just do it all for you and that's it. So you never lose out. And as your trading develops, then you just move from platform to platform. Or perhaps you have more than one platform, but it's all there for you and we don't charge. That's it. We're done. Thank you very much indeed for coming along today. Thank you for your questions. Really appreciate it uh, that you spend time with us. Hope you've enjoyed it. We are back on Tuesday morning at 7.45 UK time. If you have any questions, uh, happy to answer them, david at quantumtrading.com or anna at anacooling.com. Either of those will find us there. So enjoy the rest of the trading session. Uh, it may develop into a trend later on. We never know in terms of indices at any rate across the markets. They're all a bit stagnant at the moment. Uh, hopefully it will later on and we'll see what develops on Friday and enjoy the rest of the trading week. So thanks for coming along and bye for now.